it's Kristen and it's time for another book haul but this time with a slight twist. So if you don't know um, I've talked about it on this channel before but don't mention it a ton. Um, I run a book club at my work. Uh, I work with learning disabled and autistic adults and we have a weekly book club where we all like log on to Zoom and we'll have a bit of a chat, catch up at the beginning of our session and then I will read a book to the service users for about 45 minutes and then at the end we chat for like a few minutes about like who our favourite characters are, what we like in the story, what elements we like how we think the story can like connect to other stories we've read things like that and in the past we've read a lot of like children's classics like The Hobbit, The Railway Children, The Borrowers, Lion Witch in the Wardrobe and then we've read some like more modern adventure sort of stories like Howl's Moving Castle um, Wild of the Midnight, Ghost Cloud, um, yeah we, we like a lot of adventure magic kind of stories um, but we have read other things and then we've thrown in a couple of like slightly more adult leaning, young adult adult leaning books like uh, The Princess Bride and things like that but we were sort of running out of books to read because we've had a few books that people have like lent us to read. We've mostly been using the books off my bookshelves that were sort of like appropriate for us to read. Uh, I've borrowed some of my mum's books um, but I was like running out because everything we read has to be you know easy to read out loud because I'm reading it almost like an audiobook to the service users, easy to understand for them. Um, and you know fun and enjoyable. <laughs> I was yeah really running out of stuff to take from my bookshelves to use for book club because um, we've been going for like three years we started in lockdown and we're still going which is like impressive we read a lot of books but yeah running running out without having to go out and like buy books because we have in the past bought books but you know that's an added expense we're a small charity you can't afford to constantly be buying books so when a support worker came to me and so he said he'd seen that we run a book club and that he runs a TikTok account where he makes reviews and things like that um, and he said that people often offer to send him books for him to read and review or just like as a gift um, and he wondered if he made a video about our organisation and our book club if he could ask his like followers if they'd be willing to instead of buying him a book because his TBR is like slightly out of control and he needs to catch up on what he's got um, if he could offer like through his followers to get us books and I was like really grateful for that really thankful so I said like absolutely that would be amazing so he asked me to send him like a little wish list of what books we might want so I like looked around a bit online and I came up with a wish list of about eight books just thinking like I'll give him some options and you know if we can get one or two books out of this that would be amazing but he messaged back the following day um, and said that his followers had bought our entire wish list which was incredible and we were so grateful so thankful that's such a wonderful thing for his followers to have done so I was thinking wow eight books that's incredible it's all the books we asked for that's amazing uh, he then dropped the books off at the office and when I next came in, because uh, I wasn't actually there when he dropped them off, when I next came in I looked through them and found that actually not only had uh, they collectively bought all eight books we wanted, they'd actually bought us a couple of extra as well because a couple of the books we asked for were like the first book in a series 
and they'd actually got us the first and second book in that series so if we like them we can just like immediately <laughs> carry on with the series which is amazing and I'm so thankful. So that's like big backstory <laughs> on what these books are. So these books are not actually mine, they're for my work book club, but I run the book club and I'm just so excited. I thought like it's a book haul. I'm still excited about these books like personally because like yes I'm reading them to the service users but I also get to read them <laughs> and I enjoy a lot of the books we read so I thought it'd be fun to share. These are all like children's middle grade because that again like I said with the easy to read, easy to understand is sort of what we want and we like adventure, magic, friendship sort of geared stories and I think middle grade is a great um, age range to find those sorts of stories so that is what we've got here and I will show you what we've got for our book club that I'm so excited about. <laughs> so first up we have Amari and the Knight Brothers by E.B. Alston. So this is about Amari whose brother goes missing and no one will really talk about it and then she works out that it might have something to do with his job and then Amari is invited to join the Magical Bureau of Supernatural Affairs which uh, has <laughs> people going on missions to do with like supernatural mythological creatures and that's pretty much all I know but I've just heard really good things about this from like people on the internet who read a lot of middle grade. Um, I saw this a lot of places, it sounded really cool, I think this sounds like the perfect book for our book club um, again we love stories about like friends and family and through that with like a magical setting or magical twist to it. Um, so this one sounds really great and they bought us the sequel as well, Amari and the Great Game. Um, so I really hope we love the first one because we have the second one and I know that this is like a longer running series. Um, so. If you really enjoy it, it's a series. The most we've ever done, I think, is a duology. Um, so if we could get into a series, that would be interesting. So yes, the Amari and the Knight Brothers series. Very cool. Next, we have The Hat Makers by Tamsin Merchant. Again, this is one I heard about online as like a good middle grade children's book. I'd heard of Tamsin Merchant because she was an actress who I've seen in a couple of things like the 2005 Pride and Prejudice and the Salem show. Um, but now she, she writes books. So this is about a girl called Cordelia who comes from a family of magical hat makers. Uh, that just sounds very fun and quirky. Um, again, <laughs> as a missing family member, her father disappears. And so I think she then just goes on a journey to find him. So yeah, I don't know a ton about it other than that. Um, similar vibes <laughs> to, uh, just based on the premise to Amari and the Night Brothers. I'm sure the story is actually very different. Um, but this was yeah just one I'd heard good things about and so I thought it would be a good one to pick up. There are illustrations in this one at the beginning of each chapter, like at the chapter headers, which uh, the service users really enjoy and like to look at. And we also got the Map Makers, which is the sequel. So again, maybe we'll delve into this as a series. So that's exciting. Then we have The House with Chicken Legs by Sophie Anderson. This is based on the like folktale Baba Yaga. Um, so this is uh, Marinka dreams of a normal life where her house stays in one place long enough for her to make friends but her house has chicken legs and moves on without warning for Marinka's grandmother is Baba Yaga who guides spirits between this world and the next. Marinka longs to change her destiny and sets out to break free from her grandmother's footsteps, but her house has other ideas. Again, this just sounds very fun, quirky, magical adventure story, which is, like I said, exactly what we want. Definitely our type of thing. Um, and all the covers for these are like so bright and beautiful. Middle grade covers, children's books covers are beautiful they're so like vibrant <laughs> and I love them 
Then we have The Swifts by Beth Lincoln. So this is about a girl called Shenanigan Swift, which I love. <laughs> I love that name. It's so good. Um, I think the service users will really enjoy that. Um, and Shenanigan is like a very boisterous child, I think. Um, everyone thinks she's going to be a troublemaker, but actually she's like, I just want to be, you know, an adventurer, a pirate, explorer, detective, dream big. Um, and one of her family, or one of like the family, tries to murder someone else. And then this becomes a bit of a who done it, um, which like a children's middle grade who done it sounds very fun. Um, I think again, this is going to be very quirky and uh, something the service users will really enjoy. I can't wait to read this one personally. It looks very chunky, but the writing is quite big. So hopefully it won't take us too long to read. Then we have The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. Uh, it says, there's magic in starlight, of course. This is well known. Moonlight, however, is a different story. Moonlight is magic. Ask anyone you like. Every year, the people of the protectorate leave a baby as a sacrifice to the witch who lives in the forest but the witch Zan is a kind one she rescues the children and delivers them to welcoming families on the other side of the forest nourishing the babies with starlight on the journey but one year Zan accidentally feeds the baby moonlight instead of starlight filling the ordinary child with extraordinary magic Zan decides she must raise this girl who she calls Luna as her own as Luna's 13th birthday approaches her magic begins to emerge with dangerous and thrilling consequences Again, magic, <laughs> family, it's what we want. Um, I was also just very pulled in by the tiny little dragon on the cover. Um, but yeah, this one sounds really interesting and I think will be another great one for us. Then we have another, the girl who, <laughs> the girl who dreamed in magic by Maria Kuznia. <laughs> Uh, this says, in a land of ice and stars lives a girl with a magical destiny, a girl braver than a Viking who will one day hold the fate of the North in her hands. That girl is Saga Thorolf's Thorol daughter. But there is just one problem. Saga is deathly afraid of magic. She would much rather stay at home and play with her pet bear Bjorn than pursue a magical destiny. So when her whole village is taken prisoner by a clan of mountain trolls, Saga has to face her fears head on. She must compete in the fifth wind contest, an incredible tournament where all, only the bravest may enter and one champion can win. The prize, a horn of magic powerful enough to rattle the gods themselves. Um, this beautiful cover was really drawn in by that. I just saw the thing saying, a magical gift of a story, enchantingly magic, a luscious heartfelt adventure. Like I said, we love our adventure stories. The competition contest angle sounds really interesting. Um, and I know that the service users love like an animal character <laughs> in there. So this will be great for us. Then we have The Double Trouble Society by Carrie Hope Fletcher. I know of this one because I follow Carrie Hope Fletcher. I think she's a very talented West End musical actress. Um, and I've read some of her adult stuff before. Thought it was okay, but I've heard really good things about her children's stuff. This is about two friends, Ivy and Maggie, and weird stuff starts happening in their like neighborhood. And it says all signs point to the old mansion next door with purple smoke coming out of the chimney and a new owner who looks suspiciously like a witch. Um, it sounds fun. Again, witch, magic. There's a definite theme with all these books. You can absolutely tell what kind of books we read in our book club. Um, again, we've got birds on the cover. We've got a little cat there. Uh, the design of this really pulled me in again um it just yeah two best friends a witch's curse no mystery to solve we love friendship we love witches and we love mysteries so another perfect book for us with a very bright fun cover then lastly we have julia and the shark 
uh, by Karen Millwood Hargrave uh, with Tom DeFreston. This I heard about for a while and was always intrigued by, just like on a personal level, not even for book club. <laughs> Uh, it says, a lighthouse is a good place for adventures. My name is Julia. This is the story of the summer I spent on an island living in a lighthouse. The summer I almost lost my mum and found a shark older than trees. Don't worry though, that doesn't spoil the ending. This I'm just intrigued because I really don't know much about it. Um, but that just sounded like very intriguing and it sounds different to what we've got otherwise to read. Um, we have a lot of adventure, magical mystery, whereas this sounds like maybe there's something else going on, still a bit of adventure, but not so much like go out and fight and solve crimes and things, but more of like an internal um, look at the character and what's going on in their life. Um, and this one, again, has got some really lovely... Um, illustrations and things. I think this one will be a bit of a, a deeper, more intense one for us to read perhaps, um, but with all the pictures taking up space, that will be really lovely for them to look at the service users um, and hopefully won't take us too long to read because it's nice to have shorter books and longer books that we can you know do a short book then do a long book then do another short book then do like a medium-sized book um so we've definitely got uh different varying lengths in here and just a lot of what we like so those are the 10 books we got we are so grateful um have you read any or have like kids you know read any of these we're really excited. The service users, when I showed them the bag of books, were so thrilled, which I'm really excited about. And like, I'm I'm really excited, me personally, to read all these books, not even like to read them to the service users, although I am, but just to experience them for myself. Because I, as I grew up, sort of stopped reading middle grade because I wasn't in that age range anymore. But from doing book club, I now do read a lot of middle grade. And these, yeah, sound really good for our book club and sound like something that I will also enjoy. So that is it for this middle grade donated books uh, book haul. Uh, I will see you soon with another video. Bye.